హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ సమగ్ర శిక్షా సిద్ధిపేట్ ప్రజెంట్స్ ఆర్ వర్ల్డ్ త్రూ ఇంగ్లీష్ క్లాస్ ఎయిట్ పేజ్ సెవెంటీన్ యూనిట్ టూ ఏ రీడింగ్ ఆలివర్ ఆస్క్స్ ఫర్ మోర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ అన్ ఎక్స్ట్రాక్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద నావెల్ ఆలివర్ ట్విస్ట్ రిటర్న్ బై ద బ్రిటిష్ నావెలిస్ట్ Charles Dickens, 1812-70. It is the story of an orphan boy named Oliver, who is brought to a children's home. Mr. Bumble walked on with the long strides, little Oliver firmly grasping his gold-laced cuff, trotted beside him. Oliver had not been within the walls of the workhouse a quarter of an hour when Mr Bumble informed him that the board had said he was to appear before it forthwith not having a very clearly defined notion of what a live board was Oliver was rather astonished by this information and was not quite certain whether he ought to laugh or cry he had no time to think about the matter mr bumble asked oliver to follow him into a large white washed room where eight or ten fat gentlemen were sitting round a table at the top of the table seated in an armchair rather higher than the rest was a particularly fat gentleman with a very round red face bow to the board said bumble oliver brushed away two or three tears that were lingering in his eyes and seeing no board but the table bowed to that what's your name boy said the gentleman in the high chair oliver was frightened at the sight of so many gentlemen which made him tremble the beadle gave him a tap on his back with his cane which made him cry boy said the gentleman in the high chair listen to me you know you are an orphan i suppose what's that sir inquired poor oliver the boy is a fool i thought he was said the gentleman in the white waistcoat page 18 hush said the gentleman who had spoken first you know you have got no father or mother and that you were brought up by the parish weren't you yes sir replied oliver weeping bitterly what are you crying for inquired the gentleman in the white waist coat i hope you say your prayers every night said another gentleman in a gruff voice and pray for the people who feed you and take care of you like a christian yes sir stammered the boy well you have come here to be educated and taught a useful trade said the red-faced gentleman in the high chair so you'll begin to pick oakum tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock added the surly one in the white waistcoat oliver bowed low directed by the beadle and was then 
hurried away to a large ward where on a rough hard bed he sobbed himself to sleep poor oliver as he lay sleeping unconscious of everything around him the board had taken a decision that would change the course of his life the members of this board were very wise and philosophical men as they turned their attention to the workhouse they discovered that it was the regular place of public entertainment for the poorer classes it was the place where they had breakfast dinner tea and supper all the year round and free where it was all play and no work this was really shocking state of affairs they were of the opinion that the poor should be given only two alternatives either to starve quickly outside the workhouse or gradually inside the house with this view they decided that the inmates of the workhouse would be issued three meals of thin gruel a day with an onion twice a week for the first 6 months after oliver twist was moved in the system was in full operation as a result during this period the number of workhouse inmates got smaller and the inmates themselves shrank in size and became thinner the room in which the boys were fed was a large stone hall with a big copper bowl at one end out of which the master dressed in an apron for the purpose and assisted by one or two women ladled the grill at meal time of this festive composition each boy had one basinful and no more except on occasions of great public rejoicing when he had two ounces and a quarter of bread besides the basins never wanted washing the boys polished them with their spoons till they shone again when they had performed this operation they would sit staring at the copper bowl with such eager eyes as if they could have devoured the big ball itself and everything in it at the same time they sucked their fingers most carefully to catch up any stray splashes of gruel that might have stuck there on boys have generally excellent appetite oliver twist and his companions suffered the tortures of slow starvation for 3 months at last they page 19 got so voracious and wild with hunger that one boy who was tall for his age and hadn't been used to that sort of thing for his father had kept a small cook shop hinted darkly to his companions that unless he had another basin of gruel per day he was afraid he might some night happen to eat the boy who slept next to him who happened to be a weakly youth of tender age he had a wild 
hungry eye and they believed him a council was held lots were cast who should walk up to the master after supper that evening and ask for more and it fell to oliver twist the evening arrived the boys took their places the master in his cook's uniform stationed himself at the copper his assistants ranked themselves behind him the gruel was served out the gruel disappeared the boys whispered to each other and winked at oliver while his next neighbors nudged him child as he was he was desperate with hunger and reckless with misery he rose from the table and advancing to the master basin and spoon in hand said somewhat alarmed at his own courage please sir i want some more the master was a fat healthy man but he turned very pale he gazed in stupefied astonishment on the small rebel for some seconds and then clung for support to the copper the assistants were paralyzed with wonder the boys with fear what said the master at length in a faint voice please sir replied oliver i want some more the master aimed a blow at oliver's head with the ladle and shrieked aloud for the beadle the board was sitting in solemn meeting when mr bumble rushed into the room in great excitement and addressing the gentleman in the high chair said mr limkins i beg your pardon sir oliver twist has asked for more there was a general start horror was depicted on every countenance for more said mr limkins compose yourself bumble and answer me distinctly do i understand that he asked for more after he had eaten the supper allotted by the board he did sir replied bumble page 20 that boy will be hung said the gentleman in the white waistcoat i know that boy will be hung nobody contradicted the prophetic gentleman's opinion an excited discussion took place oliver was ordered into instant confinement and a bill was next morning pasted on the outside of the gate offering a reward of 5 pounds to anybody who would take oliver twist off the hands of the parish in other words 5 pounds and oliver twist were offered to any man or woman who wanted an apprentice to any trade business or calling charles dickens about the author charles dickens 1812 to 1870 is a well known english novelist due to his father's imprisonment charles left school and worked in a shoe factory while he was working as a office boy he launched his writing career his novels oliver twist great expectations pickwick papers bleak house a tale of two cities and david copperfield brought him name all over the world he went on lecture tours to america and got literary reputation he focused on social issues and human elements in his works